everyone, welcome to Trinity Kids Online. I'm Brady. And I'm Jared. And today we are talking about courage and how you can face your fears because you are not alone. Let's get it. Thanks for chilling with us online. See what I did there? We're talking about fear. I said chilling. Nice, I'm shaking in my, in my boots. <laughs> you are? Yes. Oh, no. Okay, for challenge time today, we thought we'd do an ode to the adults in our lives that God has given us who are always there for us and their favorite drink, the pumpkin spice latte. Nice, the pumpkin spice latte, the person could be a mom, it could be a grandma, an aunt, even a small group leader. Who loves the pumpkin spice lattes? You know, my wife and even my mom, neither of them love PSLs. So today uh, I'll be playing Trinity Kids uh, Challenge Time for our very own Holly Rance, who is a pumpkin spice aficionado. <laughs> Starbucks is a pretty fan fave of families everywhere. Whether it's that cup of coffee that adults need or that puppy cup you gotta get for your dog every single time you go or just a little family outing before you head out on a road trip. We'll throw the question up on the screen and you see if you can guess the right answer. All right, are you ready at home? Make sure that pumpkin spice lover in your home is ready to play with you because we are gonna get this PSL trivia going right now. Hey guys, welcome to challenge time. We are playing a little bit of pumpkin spice trivia. We're gonna try and spice it up with a little pumpkin spice, but you know, whatever, if you have, if you don't, this is all basically so you guys can absolutely flex your spice skills. Here we go, question number one. Did the pumpkin spice latte always have pumpkin flavor in it? Yes or no? Super easy. What do you think? I'm gonna go with yes, because it's called a pumpkin spice latte. The answer is no! What? Why would they call something pumpkin they spice if there's no pumpkin in it? I feel led astray. That's okay, at least there's pumpkin in it now. Moving on to question number two. Here we go. What year did Starbucks add pumpkin flavoring to the pumpkin spice latte? Wow, guys, that would have been a nicer question to know ahead of time. Well, do we think it is 2007, 2009, 2012, or 2015? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? I'm gonna have to go with early, 2007. The answer is 2015! <sighs> Guys, the pumpkin spice latte has not been a pumpkin slice latte for very long. That's a short time. That's only like eight years, guys. That's not very long. Guys, it's so short. Anyways, moving on to question number three. Here we go. Where did the name pumpkin spice come from? Our possibilities are the spice curls, dried pumpkin seeds, the spices in pumpkin pie, or the colors of said spices in pumpkin pie. <laughs> what do you think? Well, if there was no pumpkin in it in the first place, then I don't understand why it would be like the color. It doesn't make any sense. Or maybe, hmm, oh, maybe it would be pumpkin pie spices. Let's go with the spices of pumpkin pie. The answer is the spices of pumpkin pie! Woo! I can feel my knowledge increasing as the rounds go on for my spicing. Here we go. Latte, move on to the next one. Here we go, round four. What day of the year does Starbucks sell the most pumpkin spice lattes? Is it just September 1st, November 1st, October 1st, or October 31st? Well, guys, if my multiple choice teachers taught me anything, you always pick the one that doesn't look like the other ones. So we're going with October 31st. The answer is October 31st! Woo! I wonder why. Does anyone know if there's anything cool happening on that day? There must be a reason why that day is special, don't you think? Crazy. Whatever. Moving on to next round number five. Here we go. How many pumpkin spice lattes does Starbucks sell every single year? Is it 7 million, 16 million, 20 million, or 32 million? Those are some, that's a lot of pumpkin spicing in people's lives. I don't know, that's crazy. Hmm, there's really nothing 
you know, quantifiable about that amount. You know, it's just kind of like, woo, big number. So let's go with 16 million, maybe, maybe. The answer is 20 million. There was no chance. That was, that, was, that was picking four corners and you got your corner picked there, guys. So I didn't, you know, that's unfortunate. If you got 20 million, congratulations, but moving on to the next round, here we go. The last round A is number six. Here we go, guys. Make sure you're paying attention to this one. It's crazy. What year did Starbucks introduce the pumpkin spice latte or PSL for short? 1989, 1999, 2003, or 2009? Well, guys, I, I, let's think about this. Pumpkin was added in 2015. Gotta be the most modern date. So we're gonna have to go, cause imagine they don't have pumpkin for like 16 years. That's a lot of no pumpkin spice. That's just a lot of spice lattes, not pumpkin spice, you know what I'm saying? So let's go with 2009. The answer is 2003. Oh, so close. I don't even know what happened in 2003, but I guess pumpkin slice lattes made it better. Who knows? Who knows? Well guys, thank you so much for playing a little bit of pumpkin spice trivia. Hopefully you learned something new that you did not know. There's probably a lot you didn't know, but that's okay. Now you know. And go flex all that knowledge to all those people drinking those pumpkin spice lattes. Thanks for playing. Wow, that was some intense trivia. Can you believe Starbucks serves 20 million pumpkin spicy lattes every single year? I know. Like I'm literally in Wild. shock and not in shock all at the same time. Crazy. And to know that pumpkin spice latte started before most of you were even bored? We're so old! <laughs> well, just like most of you don't know life without the pumpkin spice latte, our story today is about a guy named Daniel who never knew his life without God. He followed God in the face of some pretty hard circumstances, so he knew that God could be trusted no matter what. So as we dig into today's experience, you may want to follow along with Zeke and Amaya. They're making something pretty cool. You might be able to guess what it is from the ingredients that uh, we're gonna show you right now. So here is what you are going to need. You are going to need some clear school glue. This is washable clear glue and it will work for you. You are going to need a little bit of baking soda right here in this little box. You are going to need some saline solution to activate all of the ingredients. And to make it glow in the dark, you're gonna need a little bit of glow powder, which we got from our local craft store. And then of course, you're gonna need a big bowl to put that all in, and then a little whisk, and we'll put the recipe for all of that in the description for today. Oh, so Fancy. Can, that's right. Can it you is. guess what it is? No, can you guess what it is? Can you guess what can it is? Can you guess what it is? All right, well, let's go to the Story Lab where you can find out if you guessed right. Let's go check it out. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about courage while we take a look at the story of someone who faced a pretty dark night. Oh, and don't miss this. Hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about courage. That's being brave enough to do what you should do, even when you're afraid. Even when something unexpected happens. Unexpected? How do you feel about the dark? Uh, a little nervous. I mean, I, I can't see. Can we please have the lights back? Hey, hey, hey! Lots of people don't like the dark. So I thought we could try something to make dark fun. Oh, laser tag. Pew, 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 pew. Or something kids can try at home. Flashlight tag? Pew, pew, pew. Or go in the dark slime. Oh, I've never made slime. Me neither. Alrighty then, let's, let's make, make it. it. Okay, what do we use for this experiment? All right, so we have clear school glue, water, baking soda, and a glow powder. First, we put in the glue. Perfect. Next, we add the water. Yes! Next, 
baking soda. <laughs> and finally, we add the glow powder. So pretty. And now we stir. And make sure you stir really good. Come on, Z, put some muscle in it. <laughs> that is not slime. Not yet, because we still need slime activator. Saline, my mom uses that to clean her contact lenses. <laughs> It contains borate ions. Glue is made of long chains of molecules called polymers that slide easily past each other. When borate ions are added, they cross-link the protein molecules in the glue so they can no longer slide easily past each other. So borate ions glue the glue? Pretty much. Cool. Let's see what happens. Slime activate. I'll pour it, you stir. Oh, and... I can already feel it hardening. <laughs> so disgusting and weirdly satisfying. I know, right? Get the lights. Whoa. <gasps> Look at it glow. That is so cool. <gasps> I want some. It's all slimy. Oh. So cool. Oh, it's everywhere. It's not in my hands. Oh. I'm getting all of it. No. <laughs> Woo! Ah! <laughs> okay, the dark can be pretty fun. Yes, unless you are joining the dark by extra big Hungry cats. Is that a spoiler? Yes, it's time for... The story before the story. Today we're in book 27 of the Old Testament, Daniel. God had promised to bless the whole world through Abraham's family, the Israelites. God delivered them from slavery and led them to freedom in the land of Canaan. God gave the Israelites kings to lead them. But while some kings like David listened to God, many of the kings ignored God. These kings even led the people to worship false gods. And at last, God allowed the Israelites to be conquered by foreign nations. Yeah, some of the Israelites were even marched off as captives to Babylon. But one of these captives, a man named Daniel, still loved God and prayed to God every day. And Daniel is a hero of today's story. Let's go! Daniel was taken to Babylon as a young man, but even as a captive, he still stood up for the one true God. We won't make ourselves unclean by eating the king's food. Test us for 10 days. Give us only vegetables to eat. God blessed Daniel and made him strong and wise. That wisdom and courage gained Daniel a lot of respect, and he actually served as an advisor to several foreign kings over his lifetime. One of them was King Darius, who conquered Babylon. Now, when King Darius took charge, he placed 120 officials over the whole kingdom and put three governors over them. One of these three men was Daniel. Daniel was so trustworthy and did such a good job that Darius actually made plans to put Daniel in charge of the other two governors. So when these other two rulers found out about the plan, they were pretty angry. They decided to find something wrong with Daniel they could tell the king about. <laughs> but even though they spied on Daniel, they couldn't find a thing he'd done wrong. Not one single lie! Mm, but Daniel does have this thing about praying to his God. Three times a day like clockwork! The jealous governors and officials perfected a sneaky plan and took it to King Darius. King Darius, may you live forever. You're so incredibly amazing. We think you should make a special command. Uh, uh, what is it? For the next 30 days, no one in the whole kingdom can pray to anyone but you. Oh, I like it. 
And if they pray to someone else, they get thrown into a lion's den. Uh, well, where do I sign? Oh, well, King Darius was so flattered that he gave orders for the law to be written down and he signed it at once. And you have to know this, once a law of the Medes and Persians was written down, it could not be changed, even by the king himself. When Daniel found out about the law, it would have been easy enough to change his routine and stop going home to pray every day. But Daniel's love for God was greater than his fear of lions. The next morning, as every morning, Daniel knelt in his room and prayed to God. Thank you that you are always with me, God. Help me honor you in everything I do. Daniel went to his room to pray again at noon and in the evening, even though he probably knew the other officials were watching him. And sure enough, they were delighted to find Daniel disobeying the king's law. Oh, they rushed off to the king as fast as they could. King Darius, didn't you sign an order that for 30 days, no one can pray to anyone but you? Huh? Oh, I, I did. Or they'd be thrown into a lion's den. <laughs> well, no one would risk it. Except Daniel! He still prays to his god three times every day. When Darius realized he'd been trapped, he was very upset. He didn't want Daniel to be harmed, but even he couldn't find a way around the law. So at sunset, the king called for Daniel to be brought out and thrown in the lion's den. Daniel, uh, you always serve your god faithfully. So may he save you. Then Daniel was shoved into the dark den and a stone was placed over the entrance. Now we don't know exactly what Daniel felt alone in that deep dark place with prowling lions. But in the palace, the king was so sick with fear he couldn't sleep. As soon as the sun rose, he hurried back to the lion's den. Daniel, oh, you serve the living God. Has he been able to save you from the lion? Morning sunlight revealed Daniel, with the powerful lions curled up around him, tame as house cats. My God sent his angel to shut the mouths of the lions. They haven't hurt me at all. Oh, lift him out of the den at once. Daniel was completely unharmed. The king was so amazed that he wrote a letter to everyone in the kingdom. I order people in every part of my kingdom to respect and honor Daniel's God. He is the living God. He has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. Daniel continued to serve the king. And because of Daniel's courage, every person in the land heard about the one true God. The end. A whole den full of lions. Daniel must have been so scared. Oh, for sure, but he could look back on the times that God had helped him. He trusted God to be with him no matter what. So, what's our part in this story? Well, okay, maybe your mom told you to take the trash to the curb hours ago, but you forgot and now it's dark. It might be tempting to just skip it, but you can trust God to be with you while you do it. Or maybe you have to give a book report in front of the whole class and it's your first time, so you're super nervous. It would be easy to just tell the teacher you lost your voice and can't quite do it. Yeah, but truth is, you can trust that God is with you even in front of the class. Yeah, God knows we all struggle with fear sometimes. That's one of the reasons God gave us Jesus. When we believe in Jesus and follow him, we have God's spirit to help us face anything that comes our way, from a, a book report to a, to a barking dog to a, to a mean kid. I think we've got it. Thank you, Brian. See you next time. So here's the thing. You can do what you should because God is with you. Too bad Daniel didn't have this stuff to glow in the lion's den. Yeah, I don't think you can ever get that out of big cat fur. Uh, I, I don't think I'm ever gonna get it off my hands. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. Daniel was relentless in his pursuit of God, even when the king made it against the law. That was a very brave thing to do back then. What about you at home? What's the bravest thing you've done? Maybe you've stood up for someone at school. Told the truth even when it was hard. Or saved a kitty from a burning building. What? You've done that? <laughs>
Well, no, but it is pretty brave, you know? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Daniel was able to be brave because he was able to look back and see the ways that God had helped him in the past. We're confident that if you look back, you'll see all the ways that God has helped you too. And if you're not sure, you can even ask an adult ways that they've seen God help. Right. And knowing that God has helped you in the past helps you trust him and be brave in the future. If you want to read today's story for yourself, you can read it in the Jesus Storybook Bible on page 152. That's right. Or in a Bible just like this one by flipping to Daniel, which is the 27th book of the Old Testament. Oh, wow. And hey, just a little secret. There's no, you can look at the table of contents right in the beginning of the Bible to find the book of Daniel. Wow. See, find Daniel and the big six and read the whole chapter. And before we go, we'd love to end with our prayer for this month. So feel free to follow along by repeating with us or just listening. Let's put our hand in our heart. Father God, fill us with your love. Help us to love you and everything you've made. Let's point to our eyes. Lord Jesus, help us to see you and to see others the way that you see them too. Let's point to our ears. Holy Spirit, help us to hear you and give us courage to do what you say. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. You'll want to stay tuned for the so-and-so show, which is coming right after this, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye! Nice. Oh, come on. Ah! Get it. Get it. Ah! Yeah. Ah! We're going to do this, okay? It's the last thing that I ever do. Stay. 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 Shh. <laughs> Here we go. Quiet as a tree. <laughs> I am getting angry! Hey bud, you okay? Oh yeah. Oh, I find if I uh, paint myself green when I'm getting angry, it really calms me down, you know? Hello everyone, I'm Steven. I'm John. And welcome to the So-and-So Show. Hey John, do you, you maybe want to come have a seat, buddy? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just, just, what? My arch nemesis from third grade is supposed to come by the show today. Your arch nemesis? Yes, Sally Kalapaski. She was my arch rival in mathletes. Ugh. Okay, but that was like a long time ago, right? Was it? All right, mathletes. Leonard bought 10 bags of popcorn at 35 cents each. How much will he have to sell them for to make a dollar profit? Okay, one dollar profit. Well, uh, I'm assuming that they aren't including the upfront capital to acquire the equipment, costs of the energy and the downstream. Are, are they using oil to cook or are they air popping the popcorn? Because that, I think- 45 cents! Correct! Yes! Hey, Jar, why don't you eat some popcorn, pull up a chair, and see how it's done? <laughs> okay. Next question. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What is 243 Divided by three squared. Oh, okay, three squared is nine, so that uh, would be two. Twenty-seven. Correct. Wow. I thought it before she said it, Miss Franklin. I thought it before she said it. Uh, John, I think you have to say it out loud with your words. <laughs> Last question of this round. In Brandon's kingdom, castles have 10 beds and houses have three beds. There are two castles and 47 beds. 
How many houses are there? Okay, castle half, 10 beds, so if- Nine! What, how did you get that? No, is she, is she right? No! <laughs> hey buddy, um, quick question. Why were you the same size in third grade as you are right now? Memory is flawed, Steven. Okay, but she seemed to be having a good time, okay? It seemed like some friendly, lighthearted trash talk. Oh, she was brutal. <laughs> so she's coming by. Yes, she sent me a message on Instachat. She said she's a big fan of the show and just wanted to come by and say hello. Of course, why not? What do you mean, why not? Didn't you just see my memory, Steven? Sure, but you said yourself, your memory is flawed. Well, what if she just wants to come back and tell me how incredibly good she was at math, or how incredibly bad I am at math, or that I'm a failure? You're a failure, John. <laughs> but you're not terrible at math. Oh, do you know that, Stephen? I do. What's two plus two, John? What's two plus two? John, huh, huh, what is it? <laughs> See? Memory is flawed, John. Yeah, you're right, you're right. You know what I think you need? Mm, a nap? No, Bible story time with Kellen. <laughs> What's up, Kellen? Not too much, my friends. What about you guys? Well, John is having some serious fear from a thing that happened a really long time ago. I mean, was it really that long ago? It was. Point is, he's not believing that he can do something. Hmm. Well, maybe I can help. You want to tell a Bible story, don't you, Kellen? I mean, that's why I'm here. Can I get your assistance? Absolutely. Perfect. It's time for another Human Head Puppet Theater! <laughs> Our story today comes from the book of Daniel and tells a story of a person named, drum roll please, Daniel! The book of Daniel tells the story of Daniel. Funny, right? Okay, 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 okay. So King Darius had 120 rulers over his kingdom, and he had three special rulers who were in charge of those 120. And one of those three rulers was Daniel. Daniel, you are good, both moral and intelligent, a rare combination. Well, thank you, King. In fact, I'm going to put you in charge of all my other rulers. Oh, uh, as you wish. <laughs> Yay. Now, the other two rulers didn't like that idea too much. Ugh. Can you believe King Darius? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I know. We gotta find a way to get rid of Daniel. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> Is there something wrong with the way he runs the government? Nope. <laughs> but he's gotta be corrupt. He's gotta be cheating or something. Nope, he's always trustworthy. Ah, okay. Maybe if we're gonna get him, we're gonna have to figure out something in connection to his god. Yeah, now you're talking. Hey, you're no dummy. <laughs> they knew that Daniel's belief in God was very important to him and that he wouldn't do anything that would put another person above God. So they came up with a plan. King Darius, may you live forever. Yes, you may rise. <laughs> we had an idea. Yeah. We think you should give an order to everyone to obey for the next 30 days. We believe that no one should pray to any other God or human except for you. Yeah! I like it. <laughs> and if anyone disobeys, uh, they have to be thrown into the lion's den. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo! Fun! Write it down! Write it down! Oh, I will. <laughs> right. Thrown into the lion's den. <laughs> Very good, my lord. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> ah! 
Daniel found out about the order, but that didn't stop him from praying. He opened his windows and he prayed to God. The other rulers saw him and went back to Darius. King Darius! King Darius! Yes? Oh, <laughs> you won't believe it. But someone has broken your order. For shame! What? Uh -huh. How dare someone do that? Who? It is Daniel. Daniel! Daniel? <laughs> but Daniel is the very best that I have, my most trusted official. Oh yes, it's quite unfortunate, sir. Quite unfortunate, sir! Surely <laughs> not Daniel. We can make an exception. Oh, I'm sorry, but an order can't be changed. Order can't be changed! <laughs> but, but what if... Sorry! Sorry! Ah, you're right. <laughs> oh, what have I done? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. No, you're not. Shh, that's between us. King Darius had been tricked, but the law said that Daniel had to be thrown into the lion's den. Daniel, you always serve your God faithfully. May he save you. Hmm? Hmm? Whoa! No, it's over now! No! No! Wow. Deep. Ah! 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 Oh. Roar. <laughs> Thank you, God. Oh, oh, that's okay, kitty. Oh. God protected Daniel. King Darius, though, couldn't eat or sleep the entire night because he was so worried about Daniel. When the sun came up, King Darius went to see if Daniel had survived the night. Daniel, has your God been able to save you from the lions? Oh, your majesty, may you live forever. My God sent his angel and that angel shut the mouths of the lions. They, they haven't hurt me at all. Good kitty, good kitty, good kitty, good kitty. <laughs> zippity doo da! Get him out! Get him out! <laughs> oh, thank you. Mm, okay. Woohoo! This is fine! Bye, Kay. Meow. God had rescued Daniel. The end. Wow, thanks, guys! That was fun. Yeah, yeah, what a story. Right? Daniel showed some incredible bravery. I'll say, but uh, how? Well, I think Daniel knew God was with him. And the same thing is true for us. We can do things that may seem hard because we know God is with us too. That's great. Thanks, Kellen. No doubt. I'll see you guys next time. Later. See ya. You know, maybe I shouldn't be so nervous about seeing Sally. Yeah. <laughs> Reveal the question. <laughs> oh, thanks. Sally, well, our question of the day is, what is the bravest thing that you've ever done? Yeah, yeah, maybe you've stood up for someone at your school that your friends were picking on. Or maybe you've told the truth, even when it was hard. Maybe you saved a key from a burning building. Wait, have you done that? No, but I would. I have no doubt. Well, well, that's all the time we have for the so-and-so show. We'll see you next time. You know what, Sally, it's really good to see you. I, I can't believe I was so nervous. Yeah, you called her your arch nemesis, mm -hmm. remember? I've always thought you were my arch nemesis. What? Really? <laughs> that means a lot to me. Math the least competition for old time's sake? Oh, yeah, you're on. Oh. What, is, what does that mean? There's math. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs>